Okay, everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the NBA slate for this evening, uh, January 4th. I don't know what it is. I still can't shake this. Um, still can't shake this cold. Almost done now. Um, so you'll forgive me for my my voice. Um, so I'm going solo today, and, and usually when I go solo, I try to take a uh, kind of a top-down approach to the slate, uh, give a good overall view as opposed to just going game by game. Um, so we're going to do that. And I am going to kind of showcase the, uh, the true DFS sheets, uh, on this occasion when we do that. I mean, you look at it, it is like a really, really big slate, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, like 10 million games, right? And all the way to the end, you have all kinds of incredible totals. You have a, I mean, 236 right to start off the slate. And then like later on, like a hundred, hundred hours later, you have, Atlanta Sacramento, which is 245 pretty much, and uh, a pickup spread. So, um, and some decent stuff in between. You have Portland, Minnesota, 233. I mean, every everything looks uh, pretty playable here. So it's going to be a very challenging slate, uh, not to mention the injury news that could come in and, and muck up the system. I mean, you have already Shea is listed as questionable. Um, so who knows? Uh, so what happened? Last night when that happened, the the quote unquote scrubs came in and, and beat the Celtics by a hundred, scoring 150, uh, 150 points. Uh, so these NBA guys are rough, man. Just when you think that you're uh, you playing against bad players, uh, you just get rolled, and that, uh, that were, the Celtics were a victim of that yesterday. And DFS players were sort of a victim of that because what a lot of them did is, is they played uh, Oklahoma City, but they ran it back with these Celtics guys. And and the Celtics guys really failed miserably. So it was a tough slate for people that took that approach, but didn't mean you have to take that approach, but I thought that was most logical. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up my sheets again. And this is the, the process that we're going to do. We're going to go through kind of the top from the top down um, the plays. And then what we're going to do is, is try to hand build a lineup. And then what we're going to do is use SaberSim, which is my, you know, optimizer slash random randomizer of choice, I guess, um, to have to build multiple lineups and see what we see what we get. Now again, these are early projections. Um, but and obviously things can change. It is the NBA. But again, this is what you get when you subscribe to True DFS. You get access to these uh these sheets where you have the the fantasy points and the projections that we give you are basically the the in, not the industry aggregate. I take a lot of different models that the industry puts out there. They're really good projection makers. And what I did is I back tested them for, for accuracy. And I have a little formula that allows me to kind of overweight some spots and underweight some spots. And I think this comes up with a pretty decent uh, attempt at, at a good median projection, right? Now, remember, this is just a median projection. You know, that number, which is going to happen. I shouldn't say that number, which is going to happen the most. That's the mode. But I mean, the, the number in between the distribution. Let's just put it that way. Um, and then you have it, the point per dollar rankings in, in column F. And then you have the sheets value score, which is based on a formula that, that um, takes into account both fantasy points uh, and, and salary and kind of rewards the, the players with the highest fantasy points. You know, we don't want to just over commit to some guy who's 3k just because he projects to have 18 fantasy points technically that is yes 6x but i'd rather have a guy at 13k get me 5x um than the 3k guy to get me 6x so we, we reward the the higher fantasy points in that way so we come up with this sheets value score and then ownership again it's based on kind of a combination of different ownership projections and this is so listen, this is just as volatile as the projections themselves. As a matter of fact, I would suggest that this is more volatile because what happens is, is let's say that somebody gets injured uh, late in the day. The projections of all the other players in the league or on the slate are not necessarily affected by that. Um, uh, the, the players on that team, yes, uh, most of them are. And maybe sometimes their opponents are, are affected in some way, but the ownership is 
te technically it affects everybody on the slate. So, so, so everybody's got to be redone, uh, which makes the ownership projection really volatile. Uh, in addition to that, if you have one, you know, in addition to that, they're volatile alongside of projections when you have to say this, this, you get the reserve point guard comes in, he's going to start playing 35 minutes. Then his ownership is going to be really spiking, which is going to then suck ownership from other places. So it's a, uh, very volatile. So, so I do encourage everybody to to come to the live recording, which is live recording. It, it's live. We're also recording uh, about an hour before lock, where we go through the most recent ownership projections. But even still, the NBA is definitely the toughest uh, sport in, in DFS because the news that kind of comes out, it comes out with very little time to to redo all your numbers. Um, and the numbers are really important in the NBA. So it's it's extreme. It's extremely difficult. So nonetheless, with all that said, um, ranking these guys by sheets value score, I do show that uh, uh, Joel Embiid is the top overall play on the slate. Um, and interestingly, his initial ownership projection is not that high. And usually the reason for that is the, is the fact that there's not that much value uh, on the slate meaning that it's difficult to get to him without sacrificing a lot of projection integrity. Um, and this is the way it's been all season long with these high-priced guys. Um, you, you, you can always, almost always on big slates, get these guys at like 5% ownership, simply because, I mean, there's just so many options of mid-range guys to play that it's very likely that some combination of those uh, outscores a combination of a high-priced guy and terrible value. Um, if in fact it is terrible value. So, excuse me. So that's, that's the first thing. And then you go down a little bit, then you have Giannis and, 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 and Sabonis, probably the next two spend ups. Now, again, only because I know the way sheets value score kind of works here, this difference between 200 and 195, 194 is really not a big deal. Um, so if, you, if, if you're between any of these three guys, I have no problem with you just basically picking one of them, you know, try to pick one that maybe, you know, <laughs> you have some correlation either on that team or on the other side of that game. And again, if you knew it for a fact, this was the ownership that it was going to be, I would probably, you know, probably drop down to some bonus and take the lowest ownership considering these guys are somewhat equal. Um, I guess it has got to be a little bit better and his ownership is kind of reflecting of that. So anyway, that's what we have at the top. Um, the next thing you notice, though, is is Jalen Brunson. And he is not only one of the highest sheets value scorers, but he's also pretty cheap, which means he's going to rate pretty well in points per dollar as well. And it's not often that you get these, these lower-priced guys showing up at the highest part of the sheets value score rank. Sheets value score really does – over uh compensate or well compensates healthy in a healthy way the, the high price guys that are going to score more fantasy points so when these when these you know sub 8k guys get up to this type of level it's really usually a really really strong play and sometimes sometimes you'll get those those real cheap 4k guys that i spoke that I kind of alluded to there just let's say you have a 4k uh reserve point guard that is thrust to the starting lineup and he's going to project for 36 fantasy points. That guy is going to be at the top of the sheets value score as well. But it's very rare that you get this. So um, I, I would really respect the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the projection and the ranking of Jalen Brunson on this slate. And, and look, you don't get something for nothing. It's no accident that he's 30% plus owned, right? So, um, but that's the thing. That's one thing to notice. Uh, another thing, uh, as you go down, these other 10Ks, I mean, these are a little bit worse than these guys up here at the top. Um, um, I would say also Julius Randle. He's interesting because you could play him alongside of Brunson in, in a game stack if you wanted to. Now, again, it's difficult to get everything in that you want, but, um, but this is something that comes up a lot. Like when you get – two guys that are from the same team. Do you want to play them together? Depends on who the players are, honestly. 
And Sabres and Messi does a good job of, of calculating who correlates well with other players and stuff like that, which is why sometimes the Sabres and lineups are going to, you know, outperform the, you know, the, the handbill lineups because they take into consideration the actual correlation data between these players where I'm just basically guessing, you know, I mean, it's educated guessing. I imagine these guys go well together, right? Jalen Brunson passes it to Julius Randle and he shoots these horrors, you know, it sounds good to me. Um, but it's possible um, that Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle don't correlate as well together. And Sabres does a better job of that than I do. But I would imagine you could play both these guys together. All right. Um, I guess the next thing that kind of stands out for me is Paolo Banchero uh, and also De'Aaron Fox. So likewise, these are guys that are sub 10K that are poking their head up into this higher sheets value score range than some of these 10K guys. And those are really, really good mid-range plays generally. So I would say that that, that Paolo Benchero, De'Aaron Fox, they're both like very, very strong plays on this slate. Um, and then again, this is what we do. We kind of go down here with Jordan Poole likewise. I mean, he's fighting. Well, I mean, now he's not really fighting. Yeah, I mean, he's beating Donovan Mitchell. He's beating Damian Lillard. Whenever you have a guy, a sheet's value score higher than someone that's like over 9K, that's something to really know. Um, so uh, I think Jordan Poole is a pretty strong play as well. Okay, so the next thing um, is that now we want to look at things by point per dollar. And I could go on. I could say that quickly is probably decent play, whatever. We'll probably get to those guys when we sort by point per dollar. So when we sort by point per dollar, now we're just getting the straight ratio of projected fantasy points to the function of price. And this is usually a good way to rank the uh, the cheapos, like the, the, the real cheap players on the slate. Um, and you'll see guys that show up at this ranking that don't necessarily show up at Sheets Value Score. Now, the top of the list, we have Jalen McDaniels. And you have to have some context. So usually the point per dollar um, ratio we're looking for to be really, really good value. I mean, it's got to be at least 6x. I mean, to be considered good value. So 6.00 point per dollar. We, we'd love it to be 7x, but that doesn't happen all too often in the projection world. But if it's over 6x, then it's probably it's considered good value. Uh, not amazing value but good value so what, what's interesting to note first of all before we go down these guys is this is not a slate even though there are like 14 games that has that much value on it. another thing to note by the way because it's 14 games and because of the way news distributes um you're just very naturally going to get some value showing up i don't know who exactly it's going to be but invariably, like one or two of these 10K guys is going to be out. And as a result, like somebody under 5K is going to come into play. I don't know exactly who it's going to be yet. And it's kind of silly for me to speculate. Um, but as of this moment, the only guy that's really showing up as great value is, is or very good value is Jalen McDaniels. Everybody else is kind of okay, but not somebody that you have to just jam in the lineups. And, and that's why, by the way, that those – you know, those 11K guys are carrying probably not that high ownership because it's not exactly that easy to get them because the value over here is not that great. But let's just go through them. So Jalen McDaniels here and here, you see Jalen Brunson, the, the aforementioned Jalen Brunson. Again, this is just an extremely strong play when you're that high up in both rankings and it doesn't happen too often. Um, then you have Cole Anthony. And what's interesting about Cole Anthony is, as you might remember, um, one of the one of the better values from the sheets value score analysis was uh, was Paolo Benchero. So these guys are from the same team. So and I don't believe that they negatively correlate. I imagine that Cole Anthony would, would distribute the ball to Benchero and he would score. That's you know, nice and easy. Um, so that's interesting. Harrison Barnes. So he uh, is is we remember De'Aaron Fox showing up. Uh, in the sheets value score. We also remember Sabonis showing up in the sheets value score. So that game, <laughs> that was that 240 point total at the end of the game. 
So what these guys provide is not only good sheets value score for a couple of them and good point per dollar play, but the fact that they're late in the day makes them even stronger because it provides the flexibility to allow you to make changes uh, later on in, in, as, the, as the night goes on. Um, quickly, uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, you know, not great, but pretty good. Good point for an hour play there. And again, I probably wouldn't play him with Brunson, right? Because they're, they, they're both guards. So for me, I probably would not play both of these guys together. Um, then you have these guys from New Orleans, Trey Murphy and Najee Marshall. They're just kind of okay. I mean, not bad. I mean, they're over five, five and a half X, whatever. And then another Orlando guy, Bamba at 4,300. So you see what we're doing here. So, so you, you can develop this kind of game stack by playing with a bunch of these Orlando guys, as long as you don't over, over correlate, you know what I mean? Like you don't, uh, you don't play three guys who are be battling for the same rebound. That shouldn't be over correlated. That's kind of like negative correlated. So, but it, so I don't know if I play even Bonchero with Bamba together, only because I do think that part of Bonchero's uh, upside is from his rebounds. So every time that Bamba gets a rebound, I might tilt having Bonchero. So you don't you want it all to work together. So I don't mind playing Bamba with Cole Anthony, obviously, because Cole Anthony just does nothing, none of the same things that Bamba does, where there's at least some overlap between Bonchero and 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 Bamba. Um, okay. So what I want to do now is go into DraftKings and kind of build a lineup based on all the things that we talked about. Now, what I think we're going to end up having to do is make kind of a middling build where we don't get to play any of these, any of those real, those real high price guys, or at the very most, maybe get to play one of them. So let's just take a look. So who was that guy that, that kept showing up on our on our board? That was Jalen Brunson, right? So we'll put Jalen Brunson in at point guard. He showed up on both both boards really, really nicely, right? Um, the other guy, again, that showed up on both sets, uh, at those, those, that 8K guy from Orlando, that would be Branchero. Now let's put him in at small forward only because um, – uh, you usually can find other power forwards, but it's kind of sometimes hard to find a small forward. Although Jalen McDaniels, who's that top value play on the slate, he's eligible for both as well. So let's just see what happens. Let's put in um, Jalen McDaniels as well. And power forward. So these are all good plays. Now at 6,100 a man, we have to test to see what happens if we play one of those good spend-ups we talked about. And that was who? That was um, Embiid, Giannis, or Sabonis. Just for, well, Giannis scored 59 fantasy real-life points yesterday, so let's not play him. Let's play uh, Sabonis, just because he is late in the day. So maybe get some flexibility there. <laughs> So if we play Sabonis, then we have 5,050 left per player. Now, on a normal slate, I would say, not normal slate, but if there was more value that, that existed, I would say, yeah, I mean, we can make it work. But let's just take a look again and see what we would have to play if we had only play 4,000, whatever. What did I say? 40, 55, 50, 50 per man. Um, well, what's interesting is you can play Cole Anthony, right? That's, that's actually a good one. So let's put him in and he's also available to play at, um, um, uh, at small forward, excuse me, at shooting guard. And we need to fill that spot. So we'll put him in there. So now we're at 49, 66. And I mean, you can, you can do it like pretty easily, right? Um, you have all these guys that you can play and the value is, is fine. You know, it's, it's not great. <clears throat> it's not bad. It's fine. What's kind of cool is that <clears throat> you can do kind of a cool game stack, right? We already played one guy from, um, from Sacramento, that being Sabonis. 
So you can play, for example, Harrison Barnes. Um, see, he's four. He's a forward, isn't it? Yeah. Play Harrison Barnes over here. And then we're back to guys like either quickly. We don't want to play quickly at Brunson, right? So maybe play one of those, <clears throat> one of those New Orleans guys. <clears throat> wow. Uh, either Trey Murphy or <clears throat> Najee Marshall. And then you can see how you can make a lineup work like this. <clears throat> However, let's say we didn't want to do that. Let's say that instead of playing Sabonis, we didn't want to do that. We played some of those cool 8K guys, 8K guys we talked about. So who are they again? Let's go back to the Sheets value score. Let's see. So it was Bunchero. Then there was Fox. So Fox was the was the other guy. What's interesting about Fox <clears throat> is it's another way to get to that Sacramento stack, um, that Sacramento game. So if we played Fox and who's the other guy? Poole. Let's see what happens when we played both of those guys. <clears throat> Fox. And then at shooting guard, we can play pool. And you could get to both of those guys and still have <clears throat> the same something like 4,600 left a, a man to play with. So those are two completely different types of builds, whether to play something like Fox and pool or like Cole Anthony and Sabonis, right? Two different ways to to spend the same, say, 17, you know, same 16,000 or something like that. So, um, and these are decisions you have to make literally every day in daily fantasy. And uh, I think either of those approaches works. And what's cool about it is I don't mind showing you this now because, again, by the time the slate comes, this is all going to change. But if you go through that exact process I just went through uh, using just my sheets, you could come up with some pretty good lineups, you know? <clears throat> so that's one thing. The other way to play, uh, and this is not bad either, is you use Saberson. So with Saberson, I can't give the whole thing on Saberson right now, but there are plenty of, of videos uh, on, on Saberson and on TrueDFS. But if you use Saberson to help build your lineups, what you can do is you put the lineups in here, and you put the projections in here, you put in the ownership, <clears throat> and let's see what type of lineups they, uh, Saberson would build. Let's say we're building 50 lineups and we're setting it to play it was as if we're playing 150 max tournament. So basically give us a lot of a lot of juice, you know, a lot of randomness, a lot of a lot of variance. And let's see what kind of lineups it builds for us and what kind of exposure we get. If we get the same types of overweights um, on the guys that appeared in those lineups we just did, like how much McDaniels, Brunson, uh, even Benchero, guys like that. Uh, pool, how much of that do we get? Well, let's just see. So, uh, it's, listen, this is not a mistake. I mean, you have Brunson would be the highest known, then McDaniel. Does get a lot of Cole Anthony. It puts a lot of Steven Adams in, which is interesting. Uh, Harrison Barnes, we mentioned, one of those New Orleans guys, Sabonis, mentioned quickly or whatever. One guy I would not be getting to if I had used Saber Sim is Jordan Poole which is interesting. So I guess it doesn't like, and if we play Fox as well, and very little Fox. So I guess what Saber Sims algorithm or its lineup building program is telling us is that it doesn't really prefer the, uh, the middling build. However, it's so funny. Like it's top rated lineup is a middling build. It's pretty cool. Right. Um, Actually, it does prefer a middle league build because, look, I don't even see any spend-ups here at all, you know, just the Sabonis. So it does like the middle league build, but for whatever reason, it doesn't get to as much pool as I – pool and fox as I get to. So um, it's it's good to see that at least my hand-building instincts does correspond to what uh, Saberson would kind of recommend. Um, and I guess that's pretty much all I wanted to go over today. Uh, I didn't even expect to take this route, but hopefully I gave you a good kind of overview of the slate. And at the same time, gave you kind of an overview of how I build lineups and how you can build lineups using the tools that we uh, make available to you. Uh, I, I encourage you to show up live at six o'clock where we go over more in depth. And uh, 
Uh, if you're not already a member of True DFS, please feel free and make sure to sign up. And if you just want to, you know, keep watching these videos, make sure you like and subscribe so you get notified when more of them show up. Uh, that'll do it. Good luck uh, on this very, very, very big slate.